Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron here today. I want to talk to you today about the world identified and exposed. Now, in Scripture, the world has a couple different contexts. You'll have like the world, God so loved the world. That's just the people of the world, the inhabitants of the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But then you have the world in a negative context. And Christians are not supposed to love the world. And preachers, men of God, churches teach against worldliness. So we're going to identify that world and expose it today. And it's found in 1 John chapter 2, beginning at verse 15. It says, Love not the world. Now that's not talking about don't love Yosemite or a waterfall or a gorgeous sunset. These are creations by God that always worship the Creator more than the creation. Don't ever worship the creation. Just observe it and it has beauty, which is one of the facts of, of uh, creation, as a matter of fact. So love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Now why would should we love the things in the world? Because when it's talking about the world, it's talking about fallen human nature, of which Satan is the little g-god of this world. So the things that come out of fallen human nature such as sports arenas, such as Hollywood, such as, you know, uh, false beauty standards and different things such as that, such as terror, you know, pornographic novels or something like that. These things come out of the world. Bad music, rap music, these things. So it says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, the world system that's coming out of fallen human nature that's under the auspices of the devil. If any man love the world, the world system, the love of the Father is not in him. Remember, nobody can serve two masters. You'll either love the one, hate the other, serve the one, serve the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. So, it's impossible. The love of the Father, the love that you've got to have to be saved, you're either going to love the world or you're going to love God. God's not going to take second place. He's not going to share his glory with anybody else. So this is why preachers, you'll hear them preach many times against worldliness. This is what that's talking about. So now it's going to the world identified and exposed. So now it's going to give an identity in very specific detail of what the world is. Verse 16, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh lust of the flesh. Many people notice parallels between the three things that are going to be mentioned here and the Genesis 3 temptation of the serpent and Satan with Eve. The lust of the flesh. This is the reason modesty is invoked because flesh always attracts. We are to be covered with clothing and cover ourselves. So the lust of the flesh because our eyes are the light of the soul and if you look at things you should not look at, even coveting, I'm talking about cars, houses, money, these type things, your eye, if the light that is in you be darkness, how great is that darkness, Jesus said. So you have to watch, let your eyes be straight before you. And this is, again, going back to modesty. This is one of the great modest, modesty scriptures because the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes lust of the eyes. Now there's certain things like sleep, eating, those type things that are natural bodily functions, but anything taken to inordinate affection is wrong. The lust of the eyes, looking at the bad things. This is all that's in the world. The lust of the flesh, the desire for revenge, the desire for uh, different carnal appetites, these type, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. I'm better than you. I'm smarter than you. I'm better looking than you. I have more stuff, so I must be superior to you. That, the Bible says, is not of the Father, but is of the world. God didn't create any of that. That's all under fallen human nature. And the world, all those things, every car, every house, every mansion, every pleasure, everything like that, the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So you're confronted with a choice today. Is your citizenship in heaven? Do you look to Jesus Christ as the author and finisher of your faith? Do, are your desires in heaven, Colossians chapter 3? 
or are you looking around at the world desiring these things? Make a decision today. There's an eternal, wonderful life for you if you make the right decision and obey the Word of God. Repent. Get baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Promises unto you and to your children, all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. It is a gift for you today. What a wonderful life. God bless you.